Hello and welcome to Jamhammer. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a quick and easy scheme for painting your Ravenwing units so they're ready for rushing your opponent's positions in your next battle of Warhammer 40k. Throughout this video, we'll be using a unit of three classic bikers from the Retro Dark Vengeance box set, but you can always use this simple scheme for any modern Outriders or Land Speeders too. We'll also only be using paints from a Vallejo starter set, so I'll leave a link to this in the description below as it provides you with a great foundation of colours to use throughout your hobby. I unfortunately had run out of black primer spray when shooting this video, so instead I've used a grey primer here, so first things first, grab the biggest brush you can, for me it's this really ratty looking monstrosity, and apply a base coat of black all over your minis. If you have a black primer rattle can or spray gun, then absolutely use this here and it will save you a load of time. Otherwise, thin your paint down so that it runs smoothly from your brush and apply a thin coat all over your bikers. One of the benefits of applying your paint by brush like this though, is that you can be a bit more selective where you apply your base coat, so areas that you know will be a lighter colour down the line, such as the weapon casings, cloth or feathers on the bikes, can be left grey and it will be easier to paint over these later than it would be if they were based with black. Ensure a thorough covering with this paint and make sure you get up and around the tyres, underneath the carriage of the bike and inside the exhaust system. Allow this coat to dry and then take a look at the coverage. This being a darker colour you may find that one coat is sufficient, but if any of your primer is still coming through, apply another thin coat. As ever, opt for two or more thin coats rather than one thick coat to ensure a nice, even finish that doesn't obscure any of the finer details on your minis. I applied a few bits of rock and gravel to the bases of these minis prior to priming to help keep the basing materials in place. This isn't a necessary step, but if you've opted to base your minis first, then we can paint this now, as the areas contacting the base, the tyres, are essentially already painted now, and we don't have to risk slipping over. I'm just using a very simple basing scheme here, so just thinning down a grey paint, and then loading up the brush a little less than usual in order to overpaint the base. So this is not quite dry brushing here, and not quite a full coat of paint, somewhere in between that covers the surface of the rocks, but keeps the recesses dark and in shadow. Grab your red paint next, thin it down again so it flows nicely off the brush, and, like the other Dark Angels companies, we want to paint all the weapons with this paint. We only want to get the casings on these weapons though, so the bolt guns on the front of each bike, as well as anything being held by your bikers. So with this set we have a pistol, chainsword being brandished by the sergeant, and of course a plasma gun, because what self-respecting angel of darkness goes into battle without a dangerously hot sidearm? Apply a little of this paint to any battle honours that may be on your minis too, and that's about it for red. Unlike the other Dark Angels, the Ravenwing don't have red tinted lenses on their helmets. Next up, you'll want an off-white bone colour, and apply this to any flesh, cloth or paper bits on your bikers, so scrolls that might be adorning their armour, as well as the bits dangling from the battle honours. We also want to use this paint to carefully pick out the Aquila on the front of your marines. Just try to catch the raised areas on the chest of these minis, but if you do slip over, that's no problem and we can either fix it now if your black paint is still wet on your palette, or if you sprayed them black first, we'll go over any mistakes later anyway, so just make a note of them for now. These particular minis from the Dark Vengeance set have the Ravenwing insignia embossed on the front of their helmets too, so if your units have these, we can pick them out now with your off-white paint. Apply this colour to any cloth on your minis too, so for this squad, the sergeant has a hooded cloak, but I'm just going to paint the outside of this, and then leave the inside black for now. As we're applying such a light colour over a dark base here, we'll need to allow this paint to dry, and then apply another thin coat over the top to make sure we don't end up with a patchy or streaky model. Grab a white paint now, and we want to use this on all the feather decorations on the bikers. So for this unit, these are on the backs of their bikes on these sort of sashimono banners, as well as around the bolters on the fairing. We'll likely need at least two coats here again too, as we're using this light colour over a black base, so apply a thin coat to these feathers, wait to dry, then apply again and check for a smooth and opaque covering. Be on the lookout for any more Ravenwing insignia that may be raised on your minis, and paint these with this white paint too. 
For these Dark Vengeance bikers, these are on their left pauldrons and on either side of the front wheel guards, as well as two little ones on the sergeant's backpack. Try to let the bristles of your brush catch these raised parts to avoid hitting the areas around them that we want to leave black. Again, no worries if we do slip over, as we can easily paint over any slips later with a bit more paint. Next up we want to do the metallic areas, so go for your gunmetal first, and we have quite a few areas we want to apply this to. Starting off with the exhaust protruding on either side of the bikes, we want to get them, as well as the clips that are holding them to the bike, and the pipes that are running underneath the bike too. Paint the centre of the wheels with this metallic as well. There's also a raised metal trim running around the edge of these bikes, so I want to carefully run a brush along these two and catch them with gunmetal. We also want to include the areas of the weapons around the red casings, like the barrel of this plasma rifle. and the barrels and rails around these bolt guns. Ensure that you cover the edges of the bikes, like around the fuel tank here, and then move on to coat the engine, suspension, and the footrests. Once these are all painted, we want to apply a little of this colour to the Marines' exhaust vents on their backpacks. On to our next metallic, and we want to use a gold paint this time, and apply a little of it to any embellishments or adornments on our marines. We can paint the ornate feathery hilt of the sergeant's chainsword with this colour for example, as well as the medallion around the neck, and the skull symbol on the backpack. And then these raised areas on the leg, and the side of the bike. On the front of each of these bikes, they have an edge around the feather decorations and an attached skull symbol that we can paint gold too. With most of the larger areas covered now, we can pick out a few more of the smaller details. Clean out your water pot to make sure that we don't apply any residual metallic flecks where they don't need to be, and then water down a leather brown. We can use this to pick out any pouches and holsters on the minis, as well as their belts. The sergeant in particular in this unit has a load of these pouches along the back of their bike, and strapped to their belt so give any of these you find a coat or two as needed. If you're feeling bold, you can also try to catch the leather of the bike as seats, and the grips on the handlebars too. Bit of an optional step here, but I wanted these bikers to share some more colours with the rest of my Dark Angels forces, so I decided to paint the inside of the sergeant's cloak with the same dark green paint that I used on my tactical marine's armour. You could do this too if your Raven Wing are part of a larger force and you want little thematic twists like this to tie them all together, or paint it whatever colour you like. Get a little bit of yellow next and apply it to the headlight of your bikers. Doesn't matter if this goes over the metal cage here, as we'll be tidying this up later. Uh, so yeah, admittedly this looks horribly garish at the moment, but I'm sure it'll look alright in the end. Ho hopefully. Last up, get your blue paint and apply carefully to the lenses in your marine's helmets. You can also use this paint on the screens of your bikes and the coils on your plasma weapons. If you want to create an easy glow effect with these areas instead though, you can paint these areas white, wait for this to dry, then water your blue down and apply this over the top. I'll pop in a link to another video here where you can see this in action. This would be a good time to check your minis for any parts you may have missed or messed up and correct these like here, where I forgot to paint the decoration on this biker's pistol with gold, and I forgot to paint the scroll bit on this marine's purity seal. And left the frame of this banner grey, so just going to go over that with some black paint now. Once you're happy with your bikers, you should have something like this. All those areas covered with paint, but perhaps looking a bit stark and lacking the depth that we'll apply now in the wash stage. We'll start off with a brown wash. I'm using the army painter washes that you can find in the description below, but Citadel or any other shades you have will be fine too. We're going to apply this to any of the off-white areas, so the Aquila, cloth, flesh and paper, as well as anything that's yellow, red or gold, like the weapon casings and accessories. 
Try not to apply this too liberally, as we only want to catch these areas, so keep a dry brush on standby in case we need to wick away any that runs onto other areas. It's no problem if this goes onto the black armour or bike, but we really want to keep it away from the white feathers, as it will make them look muddy instead of shaded. Allow this to dry, and then we can switch over to a black wash. We want to apply this to any gunmetal parts of the mini, so barrels on weapons, and all the metal parts of the bikes, as well as the grey bases if you're using this simple basing style. We also want to apply this to the feather decorations. Try to encourage it to sit in the recesses around the feathers and away from the tips with your brush if you can. Ensure you apply this to Ravenwing insignia on the pauldrons and bike too to add shading to these areas. Your minis can be used on the tabletop at this stage, but if you've got the time and patience, add a little more depth and a more interesting appearance. We can mix a little white paint into our black and use this to edge highlight the panels on the black armour. You can carefully trace this colour over every edge if you want to, or, like me, just apply a little here and there where the light could be hitting the mini, just to make the armour a little less virtually flat. Next up, grab your red paint, add in a little yellow to create a warm orange, and trace a little bit of this along the edges of any of your red areas where light could be hitting the unit like this. We can also use this colour to pick out the raised details on the rosettes of the purity seals. Grab your off-white bone colour next, thin it down well, but there's no need to lighten this further as we'll be applying it to areas that have been darkened by that brown wash. Use this colour on raised details too to make them stand out, but make sure not to apply this to any recesses as we want those darker to create a shadow. So we can use this on the peaks of the folds in the cloth on the sergeant here to add some more depth and highlights. We can also use this on the most raised details on the face too. Thin your white down a little more than usual, and we can use this to pick out a few of the details too. Try to pick out the tips of the individual feathers, which can be a bit painstaking. Don't overload your brush with paint, and try not to let this run into the recesses between the feathers to keep the shading there. For the feathers around the fairing, just trace a thin line along the front edge like this, and allow the back to fall into shadow. We can then use this white paint to pick out the raised details on the insignias too. Get silver paint next, and use it to pick out some raised areas on your metallics, like along the edges and tips of these bolt guns on the front of this bike. You can also use this paint to add some highlights to the other metallic parks along the bike and create some scuffs where the exhausts, for example, may have been dropped or scraped along the battlefield. Just a few bits here and there will be enough to sell the effect, so we don't need to apply too much of this. We can also add a little of this silver into our gold paint too, and then use this to similarly highlight the edges and most raised areas on anything we've painted gold, such as the sergeant's chainsword and medallion. This will also help to re-establish a little of the shine that may have been lost during the wash stage. If you painted the inside of the sergeant's cloak green, then we can also add a little of this on those raised areas too, so they stand out and look as though the light is catching these parts, but leaving the rest in shadow. If you opted against the glow effect for the blue areas, we can add a little white to our blue paint, and then use this to add a highlight to our plasma coils, as well as adding just a tiny dot to the eyes of our marines. Get your yellow again next, and then we can thin this down, and then use it to pick out the very centre of the panels on the headlights like this, so it just looks like it's shining through the lens. We can add some of this yellow into our leather brown too to lighten it and add warmth again, and then use this to trace the edges of the pouches and holsters, as well as apply a line or two along any raised folds to add some more depth to these areas. And that should do it. A pretty simple scheme, using just the contents from one box of paint to get some bikers ready for battle. 
Although the majority of the Marines' armor and bikes are painted in black, we've also brought in a few vivid colors to make these units look interesting on the tabletop, as well as a few hints here and there that tie them in with a larger Dark Angels force. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the bell to be notified of new videos being released. We painted some other units from this retro box set too, with a similar simple paint scheme, so if you're looking for some other easy to follow guides for painting Dark Angels or Deathwing, you can find those videos in the Dark Vengeance playlist, as well as videos for painting Chaos Forces too, if you prefer playing as the Heretic Astartes. There'll be more videos coming out about Warhammer 40k soon, so keep an eye out for more content coming soon to Jamhammer. In the meantime, there are plenty of other videos available on the channel, including a few that are on screen now that you can check out. Thanks again for watching.